Hey there, Lucky from Zeno, and today I'm going to teach you how to build a MCP server and a client completely inside of Zeno using our brand new functionality. Now, I've already given you a video uh, explaining kind of what is the model context protocol. So we're going to get a little bit more technical now and understand exactly how it's going to function and how we deploy that through Zeno. So the key elements we're looking at today is really having a MCP client connect to our Zeno hosted MCP server we're going to be able to access and get some tools from it and be able to then execute those tools by an AI. So how we'll do this is we'll have a host, which will deploy as a chatbot through one of our Zeno API endpoints. We'll then have a client endpoint, which will handle the conversation and converting the tools into the required format for open AI. And currently in our iteration of MCP uh, uh, support, we currently only support capabilities such as tools. We don't yet have support for the resources and prompts, but uh, we do plan to support that in the future as the uh, protocol becomes a little bit more mature. So really what happens is what we're going to be having our client do is be able to contact our Xano hosted MCP server. We're then going to be able to get our tools and we're going to be able to execute those tools based on a user query from a chapter. So getting into that, first we've introduced some brand new items, which is the AI tools item you'll see here on the left-hand side. And inside of your AI tools, you'll see that we've got a server here or an option to add a brand new MCP server. And really that's how simple we've made it is all you need to do to actually launch an MCP server is click a button and we've defined uh, created that for you. Now there are some uh, things we can edit inside of our MCP server configuration. One, for example, is our instructions. So here we might want to um, give it some additional information about how our server works and how our tools within that server works. As what's gonna happen is an AI is gonna receive these instructions when we connect to the MCP server. And it's gonna use these instructions to help it navigate the tools within the server. And once we've configured our server, you'll see that I've actually got four tools set up within this tool set. And what is unique about an individual tool is it's actually identical to the existing function stacks that you're used to within Xano. What we've done is we've leveraged all the existing capabilities that we've got within our function stack to automatically make it compatible for an MCP tool. So what that means is we're able to define now a new field, which is our tool instructions, which is really important we give it clear instructions as to what this tool's doing. So that way we can have our AI respond or know what to do with it and then be able to execute the tool. Now, something we also do is we automatically take the inputs that you define inside your function stack and these get passed across to an AI. So it understands how to interact with this tool. You can also include descriptions inside the tool itself. So describe the task and that will be included as part of the request uh, when the, the AI uh, gets the data back. So, Inside our tool, um, I've got four of these currently set up. And what does this really look like? So we've got a server and we have this connection URL, which is basically how we can connect to this and all the tools that exist within it. So I want to quickly give you an example of what it looks like to actually use a tool. Now you'll notice I've got uh, everything here is set with user authentication. So we're not just being able to build a MCP server for us to use individually, we're able to deploy an MCP server and client that we can then deploy for our end users of our application, leveraging the Xano's native authentication system. So you can have personalized MCP servers you deploy. So I'm going to head across now to one of my API endpoints, and I've actually got four separate endpoints set up here. One is our standard auth login and auth me endpoints being two. And then I have a two chatbot endpoints here. One here is actually the client that is handling all of the, uh, the logic required to contact the MCP server and then also be able to um, respond with uh, tool usage. And then I've got another endpoint here, which is actually a get endpoint, which is for a chatbot. And this one's unique where I've actually set this uh, content type of this page to be HTML. So when I actually access this inside of my browser, we now have this chatbot rendered uh, and I'm logged in as a user. So this is all leveraging the uh, API endpoints that we've got set up in this group. And I've got a super secure password, password one, two, three. 
which we'll get a nice warning from Google. So <laughs> new secure passwords. We can now see we've got a endpoint or a chatbot here logged in and I can start to interact with it. So hey there, how are you? And can you get my tasks, please? So the tools I created was a basic task management application that allows you to essentially uh, you know, add and receive tasks. So we've got our most recent task here. Where we've got uh, essentially some filming of some MCPs and some stuff we need to do. So great. Let's please update the status of ID 10 to complete. And we've now just updated the status of ID 10 to be complete. So this is our chat bot, but what's actually happening uh, inside of Xano? So if I head across to my uh, tasks and I check status 10, we can now see a ship MCP client is now set as completed. So what's happening is we can see this is related to a user as well, which was the user that I signed in as. So we've now set up a AI to execute our tools all from a client that we've created in our API endpoints. So we've seen that tool. That tool we just used then was our uh, first. We got our tasks. So we've actually set up each of these requests to only return data that is specific to the user accessing this tool. And how we've done that is your tools, just like your API endpoints, can have authentication enabled. And I'm then able to only return the tasks that are associated to the authentication ID, which is the user ID of the user that's making the request to this tool. So from this setup, we've now basically have an MCP that allows each of our users to have their own task management AI that's able to add tasks, delete tasks, edit tasks, get tasks. And essentially anything you want to have uh, performed as an action can be set up as a tool that an AI can then interpret. So the, the tools are really easy for us to set up because you don't have to learn anything new. It's all set up and just uh, reusing your existing function stacks. What's nice with that is we've also set up an easy way for you to do that. So let's say, for example, you have an existing API that you want to use. You can actually head across to your API. And then when you uh, click convert to tool or use this AI tool, that will automatically translate that to become a tool that you can execute. So your business logic or pre-existing logic is now instantly AI accessible, which I think is super cool. Now, jumping into actually the, the nuts and bolts of how does this work? So we've got this AI now that's um, communicating and we've got some uh, things happening, but what's the magic that's happening behind the scenes? Well, we can do that through the actual client that we've created here. So as part of uh, making a client inside of the function stack, how we've done that is we've introduced two new function stack statements. So the first one is this MCP list tools, which allows us to define a server. And um, we also got the auth enabled and what this does is actually returns all of the, the tools that are within that server. And it gives us the definitions and instructions that explain how that tool should be used. And the other one we have as well is down the bottom here, we've got this MCP call tool, which is us executing that tool. Now, the way that a MCP works is when we contact an AI, it doesn't actually execute the tool for us. It gives us the arguments that we can pass into a tool and we get that from an AI, which we see I've actually got set up here already. So breaking down this uh, further though, so we can actually understand how this is working is we can break it down step by step. In the very top, we need to first get the MCP tools, which we can do simply just by passing in the URL. So for me, what I did is I copied this from my AI tools and I can copy the connection URL here, which is how we can access our server. Now heading back across to the uh, API, inside here, we're able to then uh, make a request to the server. So I've added that URL and we're now going to uh, see what does the response look like for our MCP server list. So we run this, we can see that the result we're getting back is actually uh, all of those tools that we had in our AI tools. And for each of them, we've got the description, which is the instructions for how the AI should use the tool. We then also got the inputs that we can use to pass into the tool. Now for this particular uh, chatbot, 
This one's specifically designed to work with OpenAI. This is where it gets a little bit confusing because each of the different uh, uh, AI providers have a different tool format required. And the MCP server in itself uh, has its tools defined slightly differently to how OpenAI and Gemini actually expect their tools. So what we need to do is we need to take this list and we actually need to convert it into the required format for OpenAI to be able to understand how to use these tools. So how I'm doing that is I'm using the brand new template engine that we introduced with our uh, last release. And what this is doing is it's taking the uh, format from the MCP tools and it's now converting it into the required format for OpenAI. So similar to the MCP tools where when we run this, we can see our tools is set up in a particular way where we've got our name, description, then input schema. We need to structure that slightly differently for OpenAI. So if we now look at how the OpenAI tool looks, we can see here it's pretty similar, but we see we've actually got this type at the top of each item. And we're also calling our items parameters as opposed to at the top here, we can see we've got input schema and there's no type defined at the top. So what we're doing is we're taking the tools from our MCP server. We're now converting it to the required format for OpenAI. And we're now taking that uh, newly converted array and we're then contacting ChatGPT to um, take a user query and then respond to it. And if a tool request is appropriate, it's going to respond with the required inputs to actually execute that tool. So how we can do that is we can go to step two. And here I'm actually have another template engine. And what this is doing is we have a system prompt here, a pre-existing conversation, and we have the user's new query here and what this template is doing is it's basically formatting the conversation body required for the OpenAI uh, request. And it's automatically inserting the system message at the top. So if we want to insert a new system message, we can. It's then displaying the conversation and it's adding the user query on as the very last item in the conversation. So we've now got an up-to-date conversation that combines all the required elements. If we don't include a system prompt, it's going to use the existing one that's there, or if there isn't one, it just won't have one at all. So quite a handy uh, little template we have there. Now, once we've got this template configured, we're now ready to actually make our request to uh, the API. So how we've configured this API request is one, I've got the model defined. We're passing in the templated conversation and as the messages array and the tools is now our OpenAI tools, uh, which is also from the template above. So those two templates are now directly formatting the request required for OpenAI. And lastly, but not least, we're adding our OpenAI key, which we've got stored as an environment variable. So what this is doing now is it's taking the, the, the tools that we have and it's passing it across to OpenAI. So we can kind of test how this looks. Here, I've got a, uh, a sample where we've basically got some tasks and I'm asking it to um, try again to execute a tool. So what we can do is we can actually debug what's happening as we run uh, and execute this items. So, and now if I step through and we get up to where we're actually contacting the request, we can see when we get a response back from OpenAI and is always quite nested in the responses, we've got our message. And then in here is our tool call and it's got specific parameters where it's saying we want to use the edit task tool and the arguments, which is the inputs required for the tool are getting passed in the response of from the AI. So basically we're now ready to execute a tool because we've received that information from the AI so we can now execute it. So that moves on us on to step three, which is actually executing the tool and having the AI respond to that. How that works is essentially we've got our tool response. So here we're actually taking the uh, URL again, because it's the same server that we, we got the tools from. So I'm just defining that at the top here. And we're now passing across the tool name and the arguments received from the response of OpenAI. And you can see it's quite a nested item. So <laughs> we've got this nice long pathway to get to the, the tool name. And importantly, we're taking the arguments from OpenAI and we're using the JSON decode to make sure that we're converting that to an actual JSON object, not just the text value, which the API responds with. So we're also then taking the, the response of this and we're just uh, filtering it down to only return the data that we want. And I'm also again, 
actually making that output a JSON object as well, as opposed to text. So with all that run, um, we're able to now execute the tool response. And because I want to actually not just um, see the results of the tool, I want the AI to understand what the results of those tool are and then respond to me based on the results of those tool. So we're going to take the tool response and then we're also going to execute another request to OpenAI, which this time it's going to contain uh, some instructions to review the response from the tool. And here we're basically passing in the query from the user and the tool response and the tool args. So it understands exactly how did the tool go? What information did it receive? And then what do we get back from that tool request? And once we get all the information back, how it works is we get that response back from OpenAI. And we're then basically just mapping the response into an object as our results. So we've got three, we've got our assistant, which is the, the message we're getting back. We've got our tool arguments, which is the inputs used for the tool. And then we've got our tool response, which is then the result of the tool overall. So everything we see there is the required items for a client. And the only thing we're not doing here is actually storing the conversation inside a database. This is set up just to be basically a non uh, storing of messages uh, workflow. This has been useful and you now understand how to set up your MCP server and set up an MCP client. Everything you saw here uh, will be included as a snippet. So you can actually take this, uh, whether you're on a free account or a paid account, and uh, you'll be able to set up your own MCP server and tools uh, and directly install this snippet. So there's no configuration required from you. All you'll need to do to get this working on your end will be to uh, set up the settings and make sure you've got your OpenAI key defined as an environment variable. And then your chatbot will be executable or ready to get started from your chatbot endpoint. I'm looking forward to seeing what you build with this and, and seeing you build for your users their access to the new AI agents and MCP protocol. But until next time, speak to you then.